Hey, nurses, looking for exclusive discounts? Nurse.org has you covered with deals on everything. Save big on the essentials you need to excel in your career. Don't miss out. Visit nurse.org backslash discounts for the latest discounts made just for you. You're listening to Nurse Converse, presented by Nurse.org, a collaborative podcast amplifying diverse nurse voices. Get ready for a dose of inspiration, a sprinkle of education, and a whole lot of community. Hello, everyone. My name is Shannon Jackson, the People's Nurse, and I'm excited to be your host today. And I will be discussing transforming struggles into strength as nurses and how pain can birth purpose. This subject is very near and dear to me because I feel my fellow nurses, and I've also been in this situation in my life. Many of us are carrying an enormous amount of burden. Sometimes we are the primary breadwinners in our homes where there's financial challenges. And instead of us working maybe three 12 hour shifts, sometimes we have to work five 12 hour shifts. Sometimes the taxing shifts, the demands of patients, the demands of homes, we get lost. We are in so much pain oftentimes. It's not just physical. Sometimes it's mental. Sometimes it's both where we have mental issues like stress, depression, and anxiety. And we can also be facing physical issues. Many of us are not healthy, that we've developed diabetes, hypertension, arthritis, and other conditions. And yet we're being asked every day to continue to give and nurture and put others' priorities first. And I know that sometimes that can be an overwhelming burden. So one, I want to know, I want you to know that I hear you and I see you as I work with nurses every day in mentoring them for leadership and coaching them and bringing inspiration. And where that comes from is what happened to me some years ago. And that's why I wanna tell you to hold on and to be encouraged and give you a few tips of how, even in your own pain, you can birth purpose and find meaning while you're going through. Years ago, when I entered into nursing and I graduated at the age of 22, I was a single parent at 15 and then again at 19, two different baby daddies. And trying to pull myself off of welfare, I went into nursing. And I thought, oh my God, everything will be great. Well, the first year was a challenge for me. Coming in, learning a new skill and my type A personality that everything has to be right. Everything has to be good. I got to be perfect because I got to get off of welfare, which I did. But trying to do everything, one day I found myself drowning. And this is the first time I've revealed it publicly to many people. But I was in church, going to church faithfully. And one day we had Bible study and I was riding with my aunt, Tina, and my mom. And before I got in the car, I took a bunch of pills. It wasn't even mine. I just went into my mother's thing and took a bunch of pills. And I thought, I'm tired. This is too hard. And while I was in there at the service, I sat in the back and the pills started to kind of take an effect on me. And as it was taking effect, I was kind of feeling a little woozy, a little drowsy. And I sat through the service and I went to a Pentecostal church. So, you know, services were long. And towards the end, the pastor saw something and she called me up and asked the saints to pray. And as they were praying for me, I began to vomit up some of the pills. And I cried a cry that came from my soul. 
like everything that I had gone through, every mistake, every hurt, every why, every what's going to happen was all folded into that. And I was on the floor of the church just weeping. And people, I can remember people rallying around me and just comforting me and just letting me cry out. And I want you to know that was the only time something happened to me after that. I took a hard stock of me and I began to look within and say, what is it? What's wrong? What do you want to do? And begin to do the work on me. And that's what I want to let you know. And from that point forward, it's been a constant work. One, learning to love Shannon. To make Shannon a priority. To forgive me. Because sometimes we're in so much pain and so much stress because we made mistakes, maybe giving everybody all our best version of ourselves, that we forgot to love us and figure out what we wanted to do or who we were. And so I took all of that pain that I felt and first began to identify what is it you really want to do? How can I learn how to cope with stress? How can I learn how to heal? What is it I really want to do? Now I'm in the nursing field, but what in nursing do I want to do? And one day, as I began to process and forgive myself and forgive others that hurt me and began to heal, I got a call to my manager's office, Gwendolyn Moore, for an opportunity to be an assistant nurse manager. Here I am a year out of school. I don't know anything about management. But she saw something that I didn't see. And during that process, which I accepted, what I learned how to channel and what I enjoyed doing that ultimately led me to my purpose, which I'm walking in today, is mentoring and leadership and motivating and speaking into the lives of other people. So in that opportunity that Gwen gave me in nursing, I was able through time to build in my love and passion. And in moments where I was feeling weak, to transform that into passion. Growing into leadership, where I ultimately became the leader, the chief executive officer of my own company, where I now coach and mentor other nurses and others and motivate them and speak into their lives and encourage them. So it's possible that some of the things that hurt you the most your pain. I know many nurses today, and I talk with them. People say, boy, you a nurse, you making all the money. Some of them are on the verge of losing their homes, and yet they're working six days a week, 12-hour shifts. Some are suffering with sickness in their own bodies, and yet they got to keep going to work. So I hear you. I understand. 
And I want you to know you are not in it by yourself. You are loved, you are valued, and you are appreciated. So what do I do, Shannon? So here is my tips for you. One, acknowledge that you're hurting. Maybe that constant headache that you're having or that insomnia or that stomach issues or when you're lashing out and angry is internal pain. Acknowledge I'm in pain. I'm hurting and seek help. The suicide rate for our nurses in our nursing community is on the rise. I've been reading research article after research article saying that nurse suicide is higher than people that are not nurses because we are taught to love and nurture and give to others. And yet we forget to water ourselves. And sometimes it's not easily noticed to other people. And that's where I turned my pain and my suffering into passion and speaking into the lives and encouraging and lifting and motivating and being that sounding board and being that bridge and being that comfort to love on my community and not just nurses, but any and everybody that I can speak to. But I had to acknowledge I was hurting. And that hurt was mental, emotional, spiritual, rejection, insecurities, financial. And after feeling it and acknowledging it, I then want you to reach out for help. Enjoying this episode? We want to hear from you. Share your feedback and support your favorite host by completing a quick survey, and you'll be entered for a chance to win a $50 Amazon gift card. Head over to nurse.org backslash podcast and let us know what you think. And sometimes help isn't family because maybe we are the help for the family. Been there, done that also. It's nothing wrong with getting professional help. It's nothing wrong with seeking financial counseling. It's nothing wrong with exploring resources. Many jobs have employee resources that can help. And if you happen to have one that don't, if it's not a friend, if it's not a family, there's professional help. You owe it to yourself to get the help you need to be able to cope, to be able to address it. And I had to learn to guess what? Breathe. Sometimes we are so hard on ourselves. Sometimes we take on everybody's pain, everybody's burden, everybody's challenge. And yet we're so unforgiving to us. And many times we need people to help us walk through that, to help us unpack that so we can discover what it is that's got me hurting, what it is that's got me feeling this way. So after acknowledging it, after seeking support, what is pain teaching me? What am I supposed to learn from this? Because I believe that in every situation, good, bad, and indifferent, there's something we can glean from it. Even when it's been bad jobs. I've had bad jobs. I've had bad bosses. But I said, what is it I can learn from this? What, 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 what is the takeaway? What is the takeaway from your pain that you can reflect on? Why is that important? Because how can I realign myself and find either creativity or purpose in it? For me, that moment, that young girl, 22 years old, was able in her introduction to leadership, never thinking about it, but then going in it, educating myself, advancing myself, 
going all the way to the top to where I was a chief operating officer, chief nursing officer in the hospital, impacting thousands of lives till I stepped out and became, as I said, the CEO of my own company. Living in my purpose. That young girl, 15 years old, pregnant, broken, two children, no husband, two baby daddies, going into a profession that demanded me to give care when I myself needed care, giving care and broken on the inside. So I understand. But I was able to funnel and challenge that. And even when I have moments of what's going on, I use that same mechanism. What am I to learn? How is purpose can manifest in that? Not seeing every tragedy as a tragedy, but there can be triumph in tragedy. Even when we suffer loss, and I'm not just talking about loss of self. Sometimes that's the biggest loss when we lose ourselves. Lose ourselves to relationships, lose ourselves to jobs, lose ourselves in our identity, lose ourselves when we have to change situations. Maybe I was a baller and I had a big house and a big car, and life happened because it happens. And I had to move, I had to downsize. So my identity was attached to the things versus attached to who I am. But I rediscovered who I was and I fell in love with me again and understanding what really matters. So my fellow nurses, I want you to pause and understand you are your number one priority. Yes, you. And you deserve to be whole in every area of life. Now, it may take time, but invest the time. Invest in your happiness. Invest in your peace. Invest in what it is that will bring you a sense of purpose. And what's so beautiful about the profession of nursing now, you may start in one area, but due to you rediscovering what you want, you may take it into another area altogether that will bring you joy, that will bring you comfort, that will bring you purpose. There could be tons of chaos going on in my life now. Recently, I had death in the family, not one, but two. Buried them back to back. They died a day apart and we had the funerals a day apart. Back in the day, I would fall apart. But today I'm able to channel that and speak into the lives of many people and use that to not only uplift them. And as I'm uplifting them, I'm also uplifting myself. And what I find when I speak into the lives of others now, I take that same medicine and I say, now, Shannon, what you said to them, you use it on you. So take action. And it starts with, hey, I'm hurting. Even on your job. Don't be afraid if you came in and you had a bad night or something happened at home. Talk to the supervisor and say, you know what? Care enough to confront. I'm not in my best today. Something happened, but I'm going to get it together. Give me a moment. Is there any way? Maybe I can have a lighter assignment. And if that's not possible, do you mind if I leave a little early? Because I'm not my best. Or maybe that day you wake up and say, you know what? I'm not my best. I want safety of them and I want safety of me. It might be a day you have to call in because you want to gather yourself. Whatever that is that requires you to begin to process 
to acknowledge it, to seek help. Don't be opposed to it even being professional help. Then to reflect, realign, and take action. Because as I'm closing this out, you can find purpose when you're struggling with pain. So I want you to do something that I often tell others to do. I want you to remember to love yourself. Yeah, that's right. Give yourself a big hug. Because we hug others, but we don't hug ourselves. Take care of yourself by addressing your pain, openly acknowledging it and seeking the help and taking action on how can I take this pain and turn it into purpose in my life? Because guess what? You are absolutely worth it. I thank you for tuning in to this episode of Nurse Converse. I want you to do me a favor and make sure you not only check this out and leave a comment, but share it and tune in to Nurse Converse where all podcasts are being heard or seen because there's a lot of great episodes that are here to help you. Whether you are a nurse, is first to nurses, but to anyone, there's something here for you as well. And don't forget to check out your girl, Shannon Jackson, the people's nurse on Living Your Life Without Limits on Instagram, our website, our podcast. And thank you for tuning in and have a wonderful day. Thanks for joining Nurse Converse, brought to you by nurse.org. Help us grow by leaving a five-star rating and review on your favorite podcast platform. Nurse.org supports nurses with career and education tips, life advice, and breaking news. Thank you for all you do and for being you.